this is an updated version of the D&D &D or drag and drop template because there have been quite a few changes recently and with the update of Genially it means that the older version doesn't work properly anymore. And actually the newer version is more straightforward to use really. Okay, so I'm going to show you what it looks like first. So here's a simple example. So I've got my three words and I need to match them to the right colors. So we do green, red, and as you can see, it's giving me feedback straight away. So this is the version where you get individual feedback. So as soon as you get it right, I get the feedback that it is right. Here's another version where you get more general feedback. So we've got same task, but let's say I'm getting it wrong. So I put both of them on green. This time, as you can see, the feedback doesn't come up straight away, but instead I need to click the verification button and it is now giving me feedback that blue was wrong. So blue went back down there. So I know this one is the one that was wrong. And I don't know if you noticed, there was also a picture there, which is telling me that it's wrong. So if I put blue there, get the verification and only now is me showing that all of this is correct. I got some paint and a brush. The reward could obviously also be the link to the next page, which means that only when the task is completed can the player go to the next page. Okay, so there are lots of different types of feedback that you can give. So I'm showing you all the different versions of it. So here we've got our object, which in this case is the circle, and our target, which is this circle or this ring. Okay, so the blue text goes with the blue one. So at the moment here, I can see the two off elements. So when I match up correctly, then they disappear and instead I get the on elements. The difference between on one and on off is when I do this. So every time I move it, on off turns on and off as it says, while on one means it just turns on once and that doesn't turn on again. So the same with the red. So each each object and each target can have individual feedback and you could have different combinations. So you could combine any of those feedbacks. Then also, I've also got the general feedback, which is the black one down here. So this only comes into play when all the objects are matched up correctly. So if I match up blue, and I match up red. Now the black elements have changed as well. So the on element has come off, has come on, and the off element has turned off. The on off obviously turns on and off every time I move this around. So I show you what the template looks like. So to do this, you need to have this template. So downloaded from the presentation, you can just add it to your own page, to your own presentation by using add page, and then find it in your Genially presentations once you've done downloaded it. Okay, so this is what it looks like. And the nice thing about the newest version is that it's all color coded as you can see. So on here, I think we've got uh, 20 different objects that we can match up with 20 different targets. If you want several items to go into the same target, so let's say you've got two categories and each one has five words in it, that's fine because you can just have all the targets in one place and all group with the same element. So I can show that in a minute. Always go by color and also you need to use the top row first, then the second row, then the third row and so on. At least if you're using the general uh, feedback one because it will only work if it is done in order. Okay, so I'll show you how to do it now. The most important thing is this yellow box. So make sure you use this and add it to your page. So here's my example page, which at the moment just has some writing and some pictures on it and no no uh, interactivity. So I need that yellow box. If you've used D&D &D before and it doesn't work anymore since the update, make sure you're using this new yellow box, which should have D&D, &D, then kind of these two O's, which are meant to be the infinity symbol, and the date, because it, as you can see, it's been updated on the 16th of March, 21. Okay, then I need, I've got 
two words that I want to match up to two different places. So I need two different colors. So I'll take my two objects and my two targets and stick them on here. Okay, so my objects that I want to move around are these two words, pink and purple. So I group them. So I, I group them. You can either do it by clicking the symbol or you can click Control G, which I find is a bit easier. Yes, so the two different objects need to be grouped. But I also need targets. But at the moment, I don't really have a target because um, there's nothing after the question. And I don't, it wouldn't really make sense for the students to drag the word straight onto the question. That is kind of counterintuitive. So I need some kind of receptacle. And the easiest one is to just add a shape. And that will then show the players where they need to put the word. If you want this to be invisible, that's fine. Just go up here and change the transparency to zero and then it looks as if it isn't there. So even if you've got a picture in the background, they won't be able to see it. But you need to have some kind of picture or shape that can be grouped with the target. So here I'm grouping this. So obviously I need to make sure that's the right color and the right number. So this one says target one. So this will go with ta object one down here and Target two will go with object two. Let's add another box here. Okay. So with the colors and with the numbers, it's quite easy to see which one matches with which one. It should already work. Let's try it out. Ah, but I forgot to make these words draggable. So the words that you want to move around, you need to go on here and click the hand. Once you've made your target boxes, it's also good to put them in the background or the other way around, making sure that your words are in the foreground, so they're on top of it. And I want my feedback as well. So on my colored page, I need to decide which type of feedback I want. So I could use all four of them if I want to, but normally you would only use one. So do I want the reward object to turn on? Do I want something to turn off? So it could be, for example, the picture of a closed door, which I want to turn off, and a picture of an open door to turn on. So it looks as if my answer is opening the door. Or do I want this to turn off and on every time I move the word around? So in this case, I just want them to have a simple feedback. So I use the one uh, on one, which I can group with my tick here there we go and i need to do the same with the purple one so let's turn this one on as well so now let's see if it works so purple down there pink up there and as soon as i match it up the feedback comes on but then it stays on Okay, let's say I want to make the task a bit harder because this way this, the players could just put the word at any location to see if they get it right without even thinking about the answer. So it makes it too easy. So I want to add my check button, which means only when they click check, then they will see which ones are right and wrong. It discourages them just guessing. Okay, so I put my verification here. You can't really modify this verification button, so you can't change the color or the writing on it. But uh, an easy way is to just make your own check button. So here down here, uh, the screen button I've already made. And then you just put this gray one on top of it to so make sure it's in the top layer. And this is very important. Don't group them together. Just lay it on top and then make it transparent. So now the players don't even know that there is this gray, gray box. They just see check and then they can click on there. But at the moment, it doesn't really tell them anything. So let's try it out. So I put pink there, purple there. And as you can see, it doesn't come on automatically anymore because now I've got a check button. I need to press it. Okay, so now it's giving me the feedback. Let's say I also want them to get a reward for getting all of them correct, which is that they can get it, go to the next task. So for that, I need the global feedback. 
and I want this to turn on once. So I take that black box up there and put it with my global feedback over here. Group this together and now I can also add a link. So let's say if they get it all right, then they're allowed to go to the next task. So I just take them to the next page. Okay, let's try it out. Pink and purple. Check. Yes. And now I can click here and go to the next page. Let's say I wanted to make it a little bit easier because I maybe have loads of elements to be matched up. Then I could give them a little hint by using the correction button. So that's this one in the corner here. So I just copy it and put it onto my page. And it just needs to be in a corner somewhere. And the difference it makes is that now if I click the check button, it will reset any incorrect words. So let's say I've got both of them on here and I click check. Now you see purple has gone back down there. So it gives me the hint that purple is wrong. Obviously, it does make it easy with just two words, but if you've got lots, it might help them to get to the right answer step by step. So now I can check again. Now I get a feedback for both of them and my general feedback, which is allow me to go to the next page. So um, I could also give them feedback for when it's wrong. So if I go to this one, um, I can choose if I want to give them the cross so there's wrong on and wrong wrong temp. So wrong on means the cross turns on and stays on until they've corrected it. And temp just shows it for three seconds and then disappears. So let's say I want them to have it on. So group, group them together. And now I can go uh, pink and purple, so I make a mistake. Okay, so now I get this cross on until I click the correct one and now the cross disappears automatically. If you want to do a kind of sorting activity, so let's say uh, the question is instead which, which colors have been made with red, put them in the left hand box. So let's maybe make this box red. So these are colors mixed with red and these are all colors mixed with yellow obviously down half at the moment. So I want to take this out and I just put both the targets um, into the red box. So I'll just show you that they are both in there. Okay, so I group all three together and now I can put all the words in the same box. So both pink and purple have been made with red. I'll check and yes, that's correct. Okay, so obviously you need to put the words at the front. Another cool trick you can do with this, especially if you uh, have a picture maybe of a machine, is that when two objects are combined, then objects start moving around or they can change colors. So in this case, it just turned from blue to pink. So I can show this again. So it turns from blue to pink and it also starts rotating. And really what I've done here is have two objects, two reward objects. So down here I've got my my object and my target and my two rewards objects. One that turns on, which is the pink wheel, and it also has a continuous um, rotation. So if you go there, continuous rotation, right? And then my off object is the blue wheel that doesn't rotate. Um, or I could even make it rotate in the other direction and then it looks as if it's changing directions. So if I go back into here, you can see, so I combine them and it turns from blue to pink. But obviously if they're in the same place, it looks as if it's the same object that's changing color and direction. There's another extension, which is this one here, which allows you to do the same kind of effect on a switch of a button. So if there's not a task associated with it like a match up task then you should use this one so it's quite good for turning on lights and so on as well okay here are some tips for troubleshooting so first of all if you forget to group the items then this might happen to so go into preview and nothing shows the whole page is empty even if you've got 
objects that aren't even associated with any of the drag and drop, they're invisible. In that case, it tells you somewhere you haven't grouped it properly. So you need to check your groupings. If you've grouped it correctly, but you can't move your item, then you've probably forgotten to turn on the little hand. So click on the item, click the hand, and now I can go in here and now I can move my circle again. If you match all your items correctly, you turn it on and you can still see those elements in preview, then the problem is that you've forgotten to put in the yellow function box. So just make sure that it's on every page where you use it. So now it should work again. Now everything is, uh, the elements are invisible, but the objects are visible. So what if I need more than the 20 items that I can do with this template? Well, the good news is those guys escape are actually very nice and giving us the, the codes here so we can just make more objects. And they're even giving us the example for object number 21. And all these codes are in the same order as the buttons here. So the first code is for the object, the second object is, uh, the second code is for the target, then on one, off one, and so on. And you can also see that here in the code, that it says object 21, target 21, on 21, and so on. So it's quite clear which ones they are. Now, all you need to do is copy them one by one. So let's say I want to make object number 21. I just copy this code, copy it. I go into my page where I've already got my other 20 objects uh, because otherwise I don't need to make more and they count per page. So if you've got 20 objects on the first page and then you go into the next page, you can start using them all again. But let's say you want 50 objects, you go to insert other and in here I paste my code in there, insert it and now I've got an extra object for, that I can group with something and I can easily modify it. So if I go in here, you can see, so um, it says the color is tomato. So let's say my next object, I want to be uh, dark blue. So you can just write in English the name of the color. I'm not exactly sure which ones they are, but just try it out. Just make sure that you write them as one word, so dark blue. And if I want to make object 21, so I need to change all the numbers here. So I need to change three numbers. All of them need to be 22 now. Then I go to insert again. And now I've got object 22 and so on. So the I don't need to change the color, but it just helps then uh, when I want to decide on which target to match it up with. But obviously you can also just go by the number.